Stan Gibaldisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations. Recently, I made a video entitled My Venerable Vertical, which is a quarter wavelength antenna on 20 meters, capacitively loaded at the base. And that's kind of unusual to use a capacitor rather than an inductor as the loading element at the base of a vertical ground plane antenna. So I'm going to show you a generic ground plane antenna loaded at the base with a reactant. It can be either capacitive or inductive. Usually we think of base loading coils, hence inductive reactants. But in my case, I went for capacitive reactants instead. Why, you might ask? Well, I wanted to get a little bit more length in space to radiate my signal. I, I guess I labored under some illusion, delusion, or maybe reality that uh, I would get a better signal if I made that element a little bit longer and the current maximum then would be elevated slightly above the base instead of occurring right at the base. Also the radiation resistance of this element if it were 22 feet long rather than 16 feet long on 20 meters would more closely match I thought the coaxial feed line and I guess I'll never know because I've never tried a 16 foot uh, length without any reactants. It seems that other environmental factors uh, determine exactly what this length is going to be, including how much snow we're going to have on the deck, and that amount of snow is daily increasing, with only the snow gods knowing what the maximum might be, or even if there is a maximum. Well, that's getting off the track a little bit here in the white holes of, of Dakota Territory, United States of adverse weather. We can get lots of snow. In any case, my antenna is of this basic conceptual design with X, the reactants, being capacitive. 50 picofarads for 14 megahertz. I force feed this antenna on the other bands from 28 megahertz all the way down to 10 megahertz and forget about what the standing wave ratio might be on this feed line it's probably pretty horrendous on some bands but my venerable old IC746 Pro can match any of it at the radio end of the line which is engineering wise not the way to do it I used to have a remote matching box right here that was remotely controlled from the transceiver, but I guess a little bit of electromagnetic disturbance in the atmosphere caused that fragile electronic device to fry and thereby no longer function. So now I just have to deal with the SWR as it is but on 14 megahertz you have two options on any band for a ground plane antenna well three options actually you can not do anything at all and make the uh, reactants zero or none at all or you can make it a capacitive reactance or an inductive reactance and I chose in this case a capacitive reactance which is less often used and less often heard of than the inductive method. But those are your options when you want to load the base or actually at any point along an antenna, a vertical antenna's radiating element. You can use either a capacitor or an inductor to load in the antenna and thereby operate with a different wave, a uh, different uh, physical length than the formulas would dictate normally. 
Normally, the length in feet would be equal to 234, roughly equal to 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz. If you use an inductor for this, then that length will be shorter. If you use that, uh, if you use a capacitor for this uh, for this reactant, then the length will be longer. And mine turned out longer on 14 megahertz instead of 16 feet. It's 22 feet. Uh, I have complicated psychological reasons for wanting to do that and I'm not going to go into that or I would end up making a video that's so long that you get bored to death and shut it off before it was over if you haven't done so already. Therefore I will end this video by saying so long from Stan Jubilisco W1GV 73 and da 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 da